Wow that's a badass intro, I'm gonna have to make myself one of those, hey, do you guys remember this one? Yeah 30 seconds long, and the ignore gender told me it looked like the beginning of 21 Jump Street, and the purple spray paint came out looking pink, so I only used it that once. Anyhow, back to Barb's video. Hello everyone. Okay, gentlemen, this is going to be a video uh, in light of my recent doxing. Uh, I've been receiving, and thank you for the people who have done this, you know who you are. I've been receiving uh, really a lot of donations. Um, you know, uh, some small, some large, uh, for people asking me to move off of YouTube. Uh, meaning people are requesting uh, for me to build a site, a website, where we can, uh, you know, uh, leave YouTube, not have to deal with a lot of the nonsense that goes on YouTube, and to have something that's mine, that, you know, in light of the recent doxing, people are writing me and saying, well, you know, what if they take down your channel next? Um, my question, I guess this is an exploratory, uh, I guess, uh, video, you know, uh, to see whether or not you guys would be interested in something like this. Uh, I've been asked over and over, Barbarossa, why don't you write a book, a book that we can be proud of, a MGTOW book that, you know, uh, would actually break it down and really explain it well and really be something that we can, uh, uh be proud of and, and not just kind of, you know, hurriedly slap together. Uh, it would take me months to write a MGTOW book. Months. Uh, I would, I would, it would take me months of research alone, and then I'd start writing. Well, here's what I think. Writing a MGTOW book is somewhat pointless at this time. I mean, I get it, that Peter Guy writes an e-book, co-written by Paul Elam, I think, something like that. And these yahoos are going around preaching a marriage-friendly MGTOW. So I think suggestions to write a book are based on a reaction to that. Like people are saying hey Baba, you should write a book to set the story straight, but I think that would be an incredibly long endeavor that would do nothing in the way of settling the argument, the way I look at it, you've been writing a MGTO book for years now, your channel is an audio book, each video being a chapter, now to get on to the portion of whether or not to invest in building a website. If this website is going to actually host videos, you're talking about a lot of money, there aren't a lot of hosts willing to store streaming media, and those that do allow for streaming media are very expensive. Keep in mind hosts that claim unlimited bandwidth, just mean after you suck up too much bandwidth, they cap you for the month, crippling your site, but technically people can still browse at dial up speed, so you are not being limited, and believe me, in most cases 10 or 15 people watch just one video, you're capped for the month. Because your videos are mostly just audio recordings with a picture, your videos could easily exist on your website in 480p in the mp4 format, you could have them lower at 240p. I don't know if that resolution degrades audio or not, but in case you want to flash a picture on the screen to demonstrate something, you'd want the video large enough to have the picture detail viewable, so 480p, 1 minute of mp4 format, at 480p, using the standard H.264 codec, is 25.9 megs, we'll round that off to 26, seeing as how your channel has about 3 times the popularity of mine. I am going to take the total minutes viewed from my channel's analytics, for a month, multiply it by 3, multiplied by 26 megs, and the total is 57,926,232 megabytes, or about 57 terabytes per month. I can't give you the cost of 57 terabytes per month with a reasonable guarantee that 40 or 50 people at a time can be viewing the video. I'm just unable to find a way of calculating that, but just going by 57 terabytes alone, the price would be astronomical, you're going to need your own server, and be your own host, the problem then becomes the same, you have to pay a telecommunications company, or some kind of ISP, enough money to allow 57 terabytes of upload, with something like 240 megabits per second throughput, specifically upload, that's 240 megabits, not bytes, a byte is 8 bits, and again, 240 megabits per second, would just be for 40 people watching a video at once, how many are on your channel watching your videos at any time, I don't know, I'm just guessing a spike of 40 simultaneous people, I could be wrong, 
Maybe when you just release a video you occasionally get spikes of people watching the new video plus all your old videos, all at once, creating 200 simultaneous viewers. It's a shame our analytics panel doesn't display that kind of information, so you're looking at about $10,000 for the hardware, and easily at the very least $200 per month to some ISP. I've looked at a few ISPs none of them offer a plan high enough to cover the speed you will need, until you go business, and they want a crap ton of information before they email you a quote, and it's going to be dependent on where you live, so I can't give you an estimate, you'll have to fill that out yourself. But I can't imagine any ISP's business service, guaranteeing enough upload speed to have 40 people at once viewing a video, with a monthly bandwidth of 57 terabytes, that's going to cost you less than $200 per month. The reason it is important to make sure a lot of people can be viewing the video at once, is because if you alert your viewers to a new upload, and let's say this is not occurring on YouTube, and they go to your website, a massive flood of people tuning in, are going to pull so much bandwidth at once, and if that bandwidth spike can't be met, people are going to grow frustrated with buffering over and over, they're going to log off, and say I'll watch it later when network traffic isn't so bad and then proceed to not get around to doing that for weeks or even a month. Constantly encountering buffering issues every time they try to watch a video, is simply just going to turn them off and they're going to get fed up, plus you're going to need to pay a system administrator to keep all this shit running, every DOS attack, every software glitch, every spam bot exploit to the software, every hardware issue, this has to be managed by someone, also, there's no real advantage to hosting your own videos on your own website, no one is on your website, nor will they be once you make it. Let's say you open up barbarousasfunhouse.com or whatever, go check the Alexa ranking and tell me where you rank, even after months it won't be anywhere near 100,000, AVFM has an Alexa rating of, either 35,000 or 32,000, YouTube has an Alexa ranking of 3. That's right, third most popular website on earth, this is where the people are at, this is where you make new fans, this is where your voice gets heard, an obscure site that people have to go out of their way to log into. That's going to be difficult, simply alerting people to the fact you have a new video, is going to be difficult. Now here on YouTube, people are on here all day long anyhow, whether it's watching their favorite blogger, surfing music, arguing in comments, whatever, they're here all day long, and are instantly alerted when you turn a YouTube video public, this won't be so on your website, you'll have to alert your audience through social media, so take a look at your most popular social media platform, and realize that's the size of your audience and the means in which you have to alert people to your new video, now if the purpose is just to create a permanent archive of your videos, that's what I'm a dozen 2 terabyte drives and docking bays are for, that's what clouds, torrents, and backup channels are for, so I personally see it as ridiculous to have a streaming media website, very expensive, and serves next to no purpose, now if somehow we had a network where all of us MGTOW could upload our videos, that would be entering a whole new ball game, of course the same is true with the cost which would be downright freaky, and easily a dozen times the cost that the entire manosphere is capable of supporting, so it would be a thing, but well beyond any means to support it, now it may be possible that you are in touch with someone who owns a hosting company, or owns their own server, or whatever have you, all I can say is, make sure you trust this person to be aware of the logistics of hosting something that could potentially be as big as your YouTube channel. Streaming media is ridiculous in cost, it puts a freakish demand on a server and ISP, so, just make sure they understand the logistics, and even then, I just don't see the advantage to spending money to host videos that will most likely never gain the popularity that it will on YouTube, now, here's the good news, here is an alternative idea, you could have a website containing your writings, like a blog, and it also have a forum, and it also have a page containing links to your videos, including backups of every video on multiple networks, now that is a thing that could be beneficial, I currently do this with my blog, though I haven't updated the backups section in forever, because it is such a hassle, and that's another problem, uploading your videos to alternative networks, linking to them, and keeping that shit up to date, can be an exhausting process, or maybe I am just really fucking lazy, but I think a website with your writings, a video links section, and most importantly a forum, and maybe I even allow for people to sign up and start their own blog, or at least a select few, to have a blog on your site, a forum and a handful of MGTO bloggers, would input enough text to start climbing the search ranks for MGTO related content, the site, over a few years, could, just possibly, rival AVFM, this could be great seeing as how you are the most beloved voice in the MGTO community, to the point where whatever MGTO was back in the day, 
We are currently living in the Barbaros era of MIGTO. The downside to this is, it will be very time consuming for you. I heard you were in college, I don't know if you graduated, but if you're still in college, and heaven forbid actually working to pay your bills too, the additional effort to keep the site running would render video making, a near impossibility. There is the possibility of opening the site, investing the money, putting your seal of approval on it, and effectively just walking away to leave it all in the hands of someone else. But is that even worth it? So as great as a non-streaming media site would be, you could very well be looking at a lot of work, and you need to ask yourself, is it work that will pay off in any satisfying way? I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but I'm saying building a website, that is going to be anything more than effectively a blog, is going to be a lot of work, and I doubt you're going to have the time and patience to deal with the effort of running it day in and day out unless you have competent people you trust, willing and designated to perform precise tasks such as at least one forum administrator, and someone who is experienced in web development, who knows how to interact with the server software, and knows how to program in PHP, and understands MySQL databases, and can fix every little technical problem, and I suppose one guy who is an expert in this stuff, who has a lot of free time on his hands, could do all of this stuff for you, and you could simply act as a director, the visionary, who frequently interacts on the forum, oversees the ideological direction of the content creators. But if this is going to be an in-depth site like AVFM for example, and you're planning on doing all the coding and system administration yourself, I would hope that you are out of college and unemployed, or else I fear you're taking on an obligation you won't be able to fulfill for any length of time. I personally think a website with a site news column on the homepage, easy logical navigation to a forum, video link farm, your personal blog, and the blog of other writers, and maybe even a chat room and maybe even a section that shows off videos, which are just embedded players pulling up the actual video from YouTube or other video hosting site, that way your server is not streaming anything. The actual bandwidth is between the viewer's browser and YouTube, not even a bit passes through your server, just the data used to pull up their browser's flash player plugin, the size and position parameters, and the URL to which the plugin is drawing data from, I think this could be useful. You could have a link leading to a whole nest of links to other MGTOS YouTube channels. You could do interpromotional things with other organizations like COC. I think there could be a benefit to running a website. And if all you're going to do, is as I suggested, you wouldn't even need to buy a server. You could pay $12 a year for a domain name, $10 to $15 a month for the shared server. If the site got really big, upgrade to a dedicated server, and that's something like $20 to $30. Although because you're being hosted, it's possible enough complaints could have your site taken down for TOS violation since there isn't a host in USA that doesn't tell you from the word go no harassment, defamation, sexism, racism, or hate speech. Most companies actually look into the complaint, and judge whether or not the thing being complained about is a legit TOS violation, how much elbow room they give you before dropping the hammer and saying yup, that's hate speech, is anyone's guess, though as long as you back up the root directory and back up the database daily, you can just switch to a new host, transfer domain name, FTP the copied root directory, re-implement the database, and there you go, site is back up, URL doesn't change, so people can still just click the link from their browser's favorites, though this is not always a seamless transfer, depending on how the site is built, internal links that link one page to another from the index.html will have to be named by actual directory, not internet URL because that will fuck everything up in the database when transferring. Personally, whenever I built a site, I always designed the internal links, even images and such, to directory, not URL, the domain name, that way I open the folder on my hard drive, click index.html, and from there onward it runs like it would if I had typed the URL in my browser, I made all my modifications that way, and just uploaded via FTP. But point is, most of the software and content will be transferable, just re-upload the site to a new host, re-implement the database, which you should compress and download on a daily basis, and you're ready to transfer to a new host if you get shut down for TOS violation, and then if you're attacked so viciously that you can't seem to stay hosted anywhere too long, then by your own server, set up a business account with an ISP, and the only way your site can be removed is via court order, meaning it will take more than a grouchy feminist filing a complaint, you'd actually have to violate a serious law like distribution of pirated material, gambling, shit like online poker without going through all the proper red tape to set up that kind of a site, selling and distribution of unlawful materials, child porn, drugs, firearms, chemicals, fraud, knowingly and deliberately executing malicious scripts to attack other computers, 
actual copyright infringement, meaning the person would have to appear in court to force down the copyrighted material unlike YouTube's better safe than sorry policy, so unless they actually owned the material and was willing to hire a lawyer and genuinely take it to the courts, they ain't filing a DMCA, just consider that Stormfront.org is huge and has been running, in spite of it being the world's most popular hate site, the reason is simple. They own their own server, they are hosting it themselves, and the US Constitution provides them free speech, and Congress is upholding net neutrality to forbid ISPs from controlling access to sites, so if Stormfront can stand, there's nothing going to appear on your site that wouldn't also stand, but to be honest, many hosting companies won't take you down over a minor gripe anyway. But you never can tell, but still, I'd suggest a non-streaming media site on a shared server, this way it's not gonna cost but some pocket change, and you can test drive this concept, I think it would be a lot safer to attempt a website in this fashion, if you decided to own your own server, host it yourself, and ask for a lot of donations to get this up and running, there is going to be a lot of pressure to succeed, and not a lot of room to fail, you're going to have a gun to your head forcing you into this, forcing you to succeed, and forcing you to maintain it even if it proves to be a massive burden, and that gun to the head will be all the people who paid a lot of money to get the project started, so again, if a site is something you are considering, I'd suggest going the cheap way first, at least as a test drive, I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy, but I've seen people try to build their own video site, and all of them failed miserably, the central problem is, if you don't have a large audience, you can't get enough funding to cover the cost of streaming video, if you have a large audience, you have more donations for the short haul, but that means a higher demand on bandwidth, which is more costly than donators can keep up with, here's the big question, how does YouTube stay in business, how do they pull it off, Google won't release cost of operation beyond the costs of paying partners, so no one knows, and many have estimated that YouTube has always been losing money, and continues to lose money at 500 million dollars a year, but is owned by Google that makes 30 billion a year, so Google is willing to accept the loss, but why? There has been nothing but speculation, but most of it surrounds a theory of AdSense streaming monopolization, in other words, through some convoluted explanation, Google is accepting a 500 million dollar a year loss on YouTube to forbid competition of some sort, so it's accepting a small loss to hold a monopoly on some social media and advertising aspect to forbid competition which would harm them more in the long run, yeah, wrap your head around that, but the point is, I've seen people try to say fuck YouTube and go build their own video site, only to fail. I've never heard of this succeeding, again, bandwidth, in our current technological climate, video distribution is too expensive to profit or sustain itself, unless your network is selling pay per view or subscription, such as educational material, porn, or, in the case of Hulu and Netflix, movies and TV shows, so again, I'd caution against building a video site, just keep backing shit up to alternative channels and keeping them private until they need to be released, and even a non-video streaming site, again, the big problem is how time consuming this can get, your strength is speaking into a microphone, explaining your views, putting it into perspective, and doing so by streaming your voice on a large network like YouTube, is how you acquired your fame, it's the thing the community longs for, anything that would consume your time and reduce your video making, would actually be detrimental to the MIGTO community, so even going with a cheap site as I suggested, may not pay off but because the cheap road is so cheap, and you wouldn't have to ask for a lot of donations to get it done, if it proves to be overwhelming on your time, you can always abandon this experimental project with no real loss, and if you want to build such a site, I think it's vital to have an easy to navigate homepage, and I think a forum would be its strength, and maybe you can get Sandman to help you with this stuff, I heard in some video of his, I think, that he has done or is doing website development, I really don't know I may have fallen asleep and daydreamed that he mentioned that, of course the downside to getting Sandman to help with this is, if you actually paid the guy money, we'd have to talk Stardusk off of a ledge, it'd just be the final straw for poor old Stardusk.